It is time we address it. Why is Utah so hyped? This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello there, Bears fans. Welcome to another episode of Locked on Baylor, brought to you by FanDuel and part of the Locked on Podcast Network, where it is your team every day. Thanks so much for making it your first listen today and every day. I'm your host, Cam Stewart of ESPN Central Texas and the Cam Show on Rogue Media Sports Network, which is now live on YouTube every weekday at 11 a.m. Central Time, in case you guys are interested in that. Looking at today's episode, we are going to finally take a look at Baylor's opponent here in Week 2, and that is the Utah Utes. And why, why is there so much hype on the hype train for this Utah team? What have they ever done? We're going to go over why there's some hype there and whether it's for real or not, why it should be there. And... Looking a little men's basketball anecdote. Very interesting article I came across as to why Baylor men's basketball is splashing the cash and maybe even more than you think. And then finally, let's talk about the beer thing a little bit. I've seen it circulated. Now is as good a time as ever to talk about it. We talked about it on the radio. I'm more than happy to talk about it here in this episode of Locked on Baylor. Starting with the week two opponent, the Utah Utes. Come into this matchup against Baylor, heavy favorites. 14 and a half is the line to take on the Bears in Salt Lake this Saturday at 2.30 p.m. Central Time on Fox. So where is this coming from? Because all we've heard the whole offseason was Utah, Utah, Utah. They're going to come into this conference. They're going to wipe the floor with everybody, and they they are going to take no prisoners, and they're going to show why it's the truck stop conference of America. Things to that effect, okay? And I will put this out there. Utah was my pick to win the conference. I thought this is a pretty good team. I think they also have a fair a favorable schedule as compared to some of the other top teams in, in this league. Their, their biggest test by far in this conference is Oklahoma State, and they get them at home, where they never lose. So, uh, which we will come back to that at some point here. So why is Utah so hyped? I mean, we saw Utah last year. Baylor should have beaten them. They blew a lead late in the game. Utah wins it 20-13. to 13. They have to score twice in the last, whatever, three or four minutes to, to beat Baylor. So why are we now just respecting this Utah team? And just anointing them the Big 12 champs. Well, I don't know that you could use much from last year's game. In fact, I think it would be not bright to reference last year's game in how you think Saturday will go. I think these are very different football teams. um, For better or for worse. And even though it's not like a, a huge change in terms of the names... The names that you do see on there make a big difference. What do I mean by that? Well, first off, Cam Rising is going to be playing in this game, which he did not play against Baylor last year. And that was the lifeline the Bears needed, it looked like, to to beat Utah. And they almost did. But it will not be it, it will not be Bryson Barnes and, and Nate Johnson in this game. It, it's going to be Cam Rising, who was I mean, he's a top 10 or 15 quarterback in in the country. The only two years he's played for Utah, they've gone to the Rose Bowl both times. They've won the conference both times. When he's out there, they win conference championships. So yeah, that's that's a big difference. You're not going to have someone who's passing, completing less than 50% of their passes the way Utah did last year between Barnes and Johnson. Barnes couldn't throw the ball in the ocean, man. It reminds me of that famous quote, I believe Woody Johnson had it about Christian Hackenberg when he was playing for the Jets. And they asked him, some reporter asked him, can Christian Hackenberg even throw the ball into the ocean? And he said, which ocean? Bryson Barnes couldn't do it. You're not going to go against a quarterback that completes 6 of 19 and has 71 yards passing. It's not going to happen. So Utah had a pretty strong team last year, although did not show it in the record because they didn't have Cam Rising all year. They bring a lot back and add some more. Their best quarterback, their best tight end, both NFL guys, especially the tight end, didn't play last year. They're playing this year. 
and they added the big playmaker, the receiver from, from USC. So Utah is in good shape from a team that was very good in 21 and 22. They still have holdovers from that team at important positions. And they've got one of the best coaches in this conference. And they're playing at home. But in terms of just the general hype, yes, the hype is deserved right now. They're now 11th in the country in the AP poll. That came out yesterday. Very deserving. In fact, uh, on the Mosley Show, we talked with J.D. Paquel, who a lot of you know from his days here in Waco and working with Drake and, and with Sikkim. And he's with On3s, the this national college football savant. And I asked him, you know, what's the weakness with this Utah team? And what he, the conclusion he came to is the biggest weakness is they play in the big 12. They don't play in the sec. That's why they're not getting the national attention that maybe they deserve. Like that's, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a team with very few weaknesses with an excellent head coach an excellent quarterback uh, very good weapons out there and a pretty darn good overall defense and an excellent home field advantage, which they will have in this game. Am I saying Baylor has zero chance to win this game? I'm not. I'm not saying that. But I'm seeing a lot around where is this hype coming from for Utah. It's coming from a good place. <laughs> you know, this is this is maybe the best team in the conference. And I guess good thing, bad thing, that it's not a conference game. Good thing, because it doesn't count against your conference record. Bad thing, this team coming off three and nine, I might rather them play some absolute nobody in week three, week two, uh, instead of what could be the best team in the conference. That's just maybe that's just me personally, but like a little Art Bryle schedule there where you face, you know, nobody, 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 a nobody in the first week of conference, and then maybe you get someone in week five. I like that. I like that. They got a lot of criticism for it in a 12 team playoff, though. That would be great. And Utah could well be a playoff team this year. Um, obviously, the, the champion of the conference is going to go in. But um, we are going to talk about with JT tomorrow, JT Wistersill of Locked on Utes, and then uh, even a further breakdown on Friday of why I think Baylor can, can compete in this game and why Baylor has a chance. But Utah is that good, and I wanted to get that out of the way, um, that you, you can't compare these two teams from last year. Uh, Baylor as well. You know, Sawyer Robertson was kind of thrown out there Week two, after after uh, Blake Shapin got hurt late in game one, he had never played the offense before and had showed. You're not going to have that. You're going to have Daquan Fitt, who is an improvement over what Sawyer was in week two last year. And by the way, Sawyer Robertson is an improvement over what Sawyer Robertson was in week two last year. And we'll, we'll find out a lot about this team, about how they established the run, because by the way, Utah did not do well with that last week either, even though they had a blowout victory. Um, so both teams can be one dimensional in the, in, in on offense. Um, you're going to learn a lot about this Baylor defense and whether they were for real. Cause I thought, I think we all saw some positive things and some nice things. And a lot of us who know Paul like that Dave Aranda is running that defense and calling the plays, but now we're going to see it. Now we're going to see it. it's not an FCS team. Who's down to their backup and third string quarterback. This is one of the best quarterbacks in the big 12 with one of the best teams in the big 12. So, is the hype real? So far, yes, but it's only week two. It's only week two. Baylor can do the funniest thing and have that hype crash down quite a bit with a win this weekend. And I certainly know they will be favorites. Unlike in football, they will be favorites against Utah in the game of basketball. And one of the reasons why is the deep pockets that they've got over there at the Foster Pavilion. Passion, drive, patience. Okay, the things that keep your ride or die alive is also what wins championships. Okay, I'm talking about eBay Motors. It's got everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, so much more. Okay, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered on all three. Okay, they've got over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. So you're always going to find exactly what you're looking for. And eBay's got this thing called the eBay Guaranteed Fit, where your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time, or it's your money back. With eBay Motors, you're not trying to burn rubber, or you are trying to burn rubber. You're not trying to burn cash. One of those. I'll remember it someday. With all the parts you need 
at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home those huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive. eBayMotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions to apply. That guaranteed fit is only available to our U.S. customers. That does include Texas. So remember, eBayMotors.com. I know, I know, I know. It's football season. I'm throwing in a basketball topic in here. Baylor's basketball school, if we're being honest. I'm just preparing for some of the losses in football this year so that I can say Baylor's a basketball school. Um, for all the Utah fans listening, yes, Baylor, basketball school. Um, and I have been so impressed, not just with, I mean, the whole basketball program the last five years, right? But really the last two or three years, I've been very impressed with the reputation Baylor has gotten in the NIL space for men's basketball. The portal, I mean, that that identifying talent, that was always there for Baylor. Scott Drew always had that. He was convincing guys to come in and sit out a year and not make money and become much better basketball players and play for really good teams. Like, he was way ahead of that, but we've, we've been over that. I am impressed at how quickly he has latched on to the NIL space, and that Baylor's been very competitive in it because we haven't seen it in football, right? Or had not. I think we're starting to see it now. So it once again goes to show that Scott Drew is ahead of the curve when it comes to these things, right? Um, you know, with the portal, it's now everyone's doing it, and they're using kind of a, a lot of the same, the same tactics that Scott Drew was using for years you'll see the top guys in the portal as the best players, right? Um, I'm trying to think of, of who they would have been this year. You know, Jonas Adu, I guess, would be a good example, right? A top 10 player, um, had played a couple of years at Tennessee, and lo and behold, he's, he's going to be he's gonna be big time at Arkansas, right? That's, that's what you see. What you don't see is the 95% of the guys that are in the portal and those going after him and what they're looking for. What I mean by that is it's all great to go and get, you know, your your Jonas Adus and um, the kid Coleman Hawkins who went from Illinois to Kansas State. Like, that's fantastic. But the great coaches build their teams through getting glue guys, getting rotational pieces, getting guys who aren't being utilized at other schools and making them into rotational pieces and key parts of their team. I think of even like a Caleb Lohner. He's a guy who comes in through the portal. He's doing okay at BYU. His numbers don't shatter the earth at Baylor, but I would say he was he was an integral part of the last two seasons. Like, he played a pretty defined role for you, and those guys are tough to find now because of the transfer portal. You need to have a good coach who can go and find that and keep a rotation with guys who are able to play in this conference. And so that has now caught on. Scott Drew was on that for years, man. You know, for as many Davion Mitchells as there are, or or Adam, Adam Flagler, guys who were all Americans that came in that transferred through Baylor, there was, for every one of those, five or six good rotational pieces, a lot of glue guys that got a better chance at Baylor versus where they already were. I'm talking about Nuni Omat, Joe Luol Atchuel, um, Freddie Gillespie, big one. Uh, Makai Mason, well, not all Ivy player, but now he's playing in the Big 12 and, he, and he's like the best player on Baylor's team. So Scott Drew has been ahead of that as well. But where I really am impressed again is with the NIL because we have it's been such a hot button topic for Baylor football the last couple of years that you're thinking, well, basketball must just, Scott Drew just must have the magic sauce. And he does to a certain extent, but he's also gotten a good financial backing. And I think he himself has been a big part of that. A big part of that. Like, if you don't think that was part of the bartering when Kentucky had an offer on the table of Scott Drew going to Baylor and saying, here's what we need in NIL money to build the team we need. If you don't think that's true, you've got another thing coming. You are sorely mistaken. And it, it helps that he nabbed two of the biggest names in the transfer portal right after that from big-time schools. Guys, we're getting recruited from other big-time schools who certainly, certainly had a good amount of net worth. Let's say that. 
But there was an article recently in CBS, uh, I believe is what it was, and they polled coaches from all over the country and said, which three programs do you believe have the best NIL situations? That's not what you know for the numbers, like just from what you see on who they're bringing in, you know, at, at the clip that they were able to bring these guys in, who do you, and what you've heard through rumors, who do you believe to have the best NIL situations? Well, an overwhelming number said Arkansas, of course. We knew Calipari's getting a blank check, right? That's part of the reason why he's there. Kansas, that was 43%. By the way, uh, Arkansas was 74%. 43% said Kansas. Then you get another Big 12 team, BYU, 31%. All of those make sense. Kansas is like the blue blood in college basketball. Arkansas is flushed with cash when, when getting Calipari in there. BYU, huge alumni base, huge donor base. And then you get some more blue bloods, right? Kentucky, Indiana. And then down at just under 12%, the Baylor Bears. Now, some of you might be thinking, 12%, what does that mean? That's significant. <laughs> that is significant. By the way, evidenced in the fact that it is seventh on the list of all the programs in America. We have not hit Duke. We have not hit North Carolina. We have not hit the two-time defending national champions, Connecticut. We haven't hit any of those. We haven't hit the University of Texas. Alabama, big-time state school that went to the Final Four last year. We haven't hit those yet before we're hitting Baylor. That's big time, man. And I am hearing rumblings, which we talked about on the Moses show yesterday as well, that Norchad O'Meara might be a seven-figure man for coming to Baylor. This is a guy who had a storied career at, at Miami. He started at Arkansas State, finished at Miami, was an all-conference player, all four years, went to the Final Four with Miami in 2023. All ACC guy. Like, we are talking about a very polished player. I'm not surprised he's garnering over a million dollars in NIL, if that's true. That's not shocking to me in the least. And Jeremy Roach, by the way, similar resume. All ACC guy, Final Four, check and check. One of the top guys at his position on the market in the transfer portal. Check. Okay? So you put him in there too. That guy's got to be near a million dollars in NIL. It goes to show you, Scott Drew is ahead of the curve, and he makes sure this crap is done right. He's not messing around. He's not doing, he's not waiting on it like football is or trying not to be transactional. He will show in his coaching and his program's culture that it's not all transactional. But these kids, to get the best, you got to pay them. And he's been paying them. And we have heard rumors about this before. Jalen Bridges, a guy who came back uh, after declaring for the NBA draft, came back last year. I think Bunny had a big, had a big point to play there. Even these kids out of high school. VJ Edgecombe, Rob Wright. Like the, these guys, this is the name of the game now. And Baylor could have easily fallen behind and hidden behind a ton of excuses the same way the football program did. And the men's basketball program did not do that. So yeah, this is, this these stats to me, when you're polling other coaches, that's an incredible number. At 12%, think one of the top three NIL programs in all of college basketball is Baylor. And a whole huge chunk of them think it is better a better situation than Duke, than North Carolina, than UConn, than Texas. They think Baylor's bigger than all of those. By the way, right in front of Baylor, Kansas State. So yeah, you think you think NIL was was a was a talking point when this first came up in the Baylor men's basketball locker room? Two of the top seven are Scott Drew and Jerome Tang, who were in the locker room together when NIL became a thing. I think so. And credit to this basketball program for getting that right and prioritizing basketball on this campus. And it is with that that Baylor's still one of the reasons why Baylor's still one of the most competitive programs in the country, 
year in and year out. How about FanDuel? Uh, you guys have heard me talk about it a lot. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. How could we not talk about it? Well, I got a little something different for you because now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. And then with a YouTube TV base plan, you're going to be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. You can keep tabs on all your favorite pay bears. You can watch the Patriots to see Tyquan Thornton. I wouldn't recommend it. It's a safety hazard. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. Just visit FanDuel.com to download America's number one sports book it has been a hot topic for years years now when i saw it pop up on facebook of all places i'm you know a couple years removed from being in college so i can get back on facebook again and i saw it in in a group that i post in every day some of you watching might be clicking on the link i put in the group uh it's called baylor bears the watch but it's something that comes up a lot whether baylor should be selling beer at McLean Stadium or alcohol in general. So many, I mean, almost everywhere in the country does it now. And it's a recent thing as in within, as in within the last 10 years or so, but so many schools do it. TCU does it. It's really Baylor, Liberty, BYU. We're the holdouts. Okay. In fact, to prove this point, what I have here is beer. No free ads. I won't tell you what it is. Tasty. Baylor and McLean Stadium do not want you to do that unless you are one of the beautiful people. But damn, I feel pretty beautiful doing it. Only at the Baylor Club can you can you drink alcohol at McLean Stadium. It doesn't make any sense. You have to be rich to do it, is what they're telling you. And one of the great, one of the great privileges of the common man in America, the poor man in America, is that I can watch my favorite college football team out at the stadium and I can have a nice beer while doing it. Baylor doesn't want you to do that. And I don't think that's right. I don't think that's right. And I know, I know there are some people behind the scenes that are pushing for it. People within Baylor Athletics that are pushing for beer to be sold at McLean Stadium. I know it. I know it to be true. And there are a, there's a lot of pushback from the alumni base, probably from the Board of Regents as well. I saw it a ton. I, I said the question in that Facebook group was, should Baylor be selling beer at games? I said, yeah. And a bunch, like the next 20, say no. And I, I, I would love to hear why. I saw some people say, oh, it's going to lead to, you know, dangerous things and yada, yada. And I look, I get that. It's obviously more likely for something to happen when beer is around versus when it's not. But again, we're talking about like every stadium in the country, every everything above high school sells beer except for a couple of college football and college basketball places. You know what I mean? Like ev everywhere has beer. You know, I, and you're not hearing about disgusting, dangerous incidents at every single sporting event. You're not. I know you're going to try and spin it like you are, but you're not. So why then does Baylor still outlaw it? And to be totally honest with you guys, if it was just Baylor saying, no, we're, we're a dry campus, we're not having beer here, that's one thing. But again... They're not saying that. They're saying, like any good American institution, if you have enough money, you can do whatever you want. Go right ahead. Sure. Bring some beer. Bring some wine. Absolutely. Just cough it up and you'll be fine. That's, that's what rubs me the wrong way. There's plenty of students in the student section braving the heat who have paid a lot of money to get to Baylor. They're 21, 22, 23. 
I'd like to have a nice cold one when I'm watching the Baylor Bears, especially last year. Wouldn't you like to have a couple cold ones watching that team? Sure. But you can't. You can't. So that's why I, I think it's un-American. I think it is un-American to deny people of age willing to pay for the beer, but not the, the fancy seats. That privilege. I think it is wholly un-American what McLean Stadium is doing with that, personally. I'd love to hear what you guys think because I know it's still a big divider and I know I have people watching who were in that comment section saying no. And I just, that's okay. I want to hear this out though. I want to have this conversation. I, I don't see, I really don't see the big deal about it. You, obviously, you make sure everyone's 21. You have something that reads fake IDs. Sure, yes, that makes sense. It is college though. Most of those kids aren't driving. <laughs> um, but... Like, I, I I get the argument on both sides. But to me, you, you just, to say, oh, it's going to lead to something bad happening, it, it's just a cop-out. It, something bad can happen in any football game ever, whether you're drunk or not. Trust me. I've seen people get in fights at football games, at hockey games, and basketball games who are not drunk. I've seen it. So that to me, that's kind of a lame duck excuse. If it's going to help in any way, to have a better atmosphere, better home field advantage, I'm here for it. Two thumbs up for me. So, I don't know. It, it's I, I love having this conversation and having this debate because there's so many different ways you can go with it. So, please let me know what you think down in the comments below. And for those of you asking, yeah, I, I can barely chug water, dude. It's not great. Um, get, to get involved in the comments below. Let me know what you think about that the hype around Utah, and of course, the endless pockets of Baylor men's basketball. Drop that down in the comment section and tell me, I did this yesterday, so I'm going to keep this going. Tell me your favorite Beatles song in the comments below. Very interested to hear that one. I'm going to judge a lot of you based on that. Got some good responses on the 70s movies. Uh, not, none of you have hit the best ones yet, but that's okay. You can make up for it with the Beatles ones. Be sure to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell for to get notified every time we're dropping a video here on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. Thank you so much for making it your first listen today and every day. We're going to see you tomorrow on your favorite show, which is, of course, Locked on Baylor.